What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today we are continuing on with part three of five with best, you know, top five fountain pens at such and such a range. Today is going to be mid to high range. So mid, you know, around like the $200, high around the $500. Uh, and the next video that gets posted is going to be the over 500. So that's going to be like the high range. So today, mid to high, 200 to $500. We're going to go uh, start with one of my favorite all-time pens ever. And this category I think is super dope because while I think the previous category um, is where most people hang out, this category I think is also where a lot of people hang out. So I think, you know, the, the previous one, the, the mid range fountain pen is where the majority of people, I think this is the rest of the majority. <laughs> um, I think this is the category where the rest of people hang. One of my favorite all time pens is this guy right here. This is the Pilot Custom Heritage 823. He's gonna clock in at about $288 us retail pricing um he is one that i have uh waited quite a while to get um i actually borrowed a friend's pen before i purchased this one to try it out um they had a fine nib uh which was fantastic um i purchased it in a medium nib and this i freaking love I have the amber transparency um, version here. You can get a clear one, you can get a black transparency. Um, they're really, really great pens. Vacuum filling pens, uh, Pilot number size 15 nib, which is like the larger end for Pilot. Um, this is you know considered their flagship pen. Um, the grip is perfect. The threads are very minimal. It fits very nicely in my hand. Um, it's an all plastic pen, but when you have the pretty much the entire body filled with ink, um, plus that metal um, plunger rod there, it does add a pretty nice weight. I think it's classic looking. I think it, uh, you know, is is going to be classic and, and timeless for quite some time. Um, I really really dig it. It writes fantastic uh, no matter what size nib. Um, you can get a lot of different size nibs on this which is great um, and at 288 I think this is a pen that you would purchase and you're going to use for the rest of your life um, which is really really great. Um, Japanese nib writes on the finer side if you get the fine to uh, you know extra fine fine medium ish one that is not uh, a fine line writer is the Pelican M600. Uh, so unlike the Pilot, this is a piston, not a vacuum, but it still does fill the majority of the body of ink, which is fantastic. Um, this is not Pelican's flagship pen, technically. Uh, the M1000 is, but the M1000 does look pretty similar. Um, so it's a piston fill. The piston knob is one of the smoothest uh, pistons I've ever had. Um, I would recommend Pilot uh, and Pelican to anyone, anytime, no questions asked. Um, this is also a pretty pretty classic design. They haven't changed it in like you know 100 plus years for a reason. Um, you know, gold trim, red body, you can get different. You can get green, blue, uh, red, obviously. Um, and the price is gonna range because the average Pelican M600, again, US retail pricing, is about 400 to $404. Um, but if you up it to about 440, Pelican comes out with a lot of special edition um, Pelican M600. So it's the exact same pen. It's just that the um, finish changes. So they've had like all white, they've had pink, they now have a, a purple one. Um, so if you don't like the traditional um, colors of either like red, green, blue, or um, solid black, then hang out for a little while and you can definitely find um, some good color options with special editions. You will pay a little bit more, um, but this is a pen that you can definitely have in your collection for pretty much your entire life. Um, and you could definitely hand it down to, to somebody else. Um, I really, really, really like that pen. So 
Uh, moving on towards the higher end spectrum at $495 is the Aurora 88 fountain pen. Uh, this one happens to be the red um, anniversary one that they had, one of the first pens they came out with, uh, their flex nibs. Um, but you can get all kinds of different Auroras. You don't have to get just a solid color like this. Um, they do have ones that are made out of like Oroloid and things like that, but those are going to be higher. They are going to be a little bit out of this price range. The perfect one I think that I love, um, which is the same body like this, the traditional cigar shape that tapers at both ends. Again, a piston fill. Um, Aurora does have a cool piston mechanism where it's got this little, um, stick <laughs> for, for lack of a better term the feed on the inside comes out much farther than a traditional fountain pen um, and when you push the plunger all the way down it forces any last drop of ink up and in to that little mechanism so that the feed can suck it up so that way you can use pretty much 100 percent of the ink that fills here um, and you can't do that with a lot of other pistons um, this one happens to be a limited edition one, but there are plenty. The one that I think is the best that I was leading to before is the um, Satin Black. You can either get it now with the Matte Black or the Rose Gold Trim. Whew, that is a beauty of a pen. Um, it's the one that I'm hoping to actually sell this one and pick that up for. So if anybody wants to trade, let me know. Um, I love this pen as far as like how it writes. Just not a huge fan of the finish anymore. Um, just like the solid red color. Um, it's just pure taste. Functionally, it's still beautiful. The nib writes great. Even though it is one of their flex nibs, you don't have to use it as a flex nib. Um, you can just write normally with it um, and it writes really, really well. The great thing about Aurora is that if you have more than one pen um, across the 88 or Optima range, uh, is you can unscrew the nib in the feed housing um, and swap them. So that's really cool. Um, I do really enjoy that. And Aurora uh, is one of my favorite um, fountain pen brands. So next up we have the Sailor Pro Gear, uh, the regular size. I'm not a fan of the um, like slim size just because it's too small for me. Um, I did have one once and I have since sold it because of that reason. This one happens to be the uh, Sailor Imperial Black um, finish, which does not qualify in the normal $340 price range for the traditional uh, silver trim or gold trim. Um, but this is the only one that I have on hand. Um, this is not mine actually, this is a friend lent me again uh, because it is a beauty of a pen. Unlike the previous three, this is a cartridge converter fountain pen. Sailor does make their own cartridges, um, but it does come with it. Um, these ones are great. They come in a whole whack load of different nib sizes from like extra fine um, all the way up to a zoom nib, which is like broad, broad, broad. <laughs> um, and it's nice to have a cartridge converter in the mix um, because unlike these three pens, you're gonna have these inked up for quite a long time, whereas these ones you can kind of dip in and out. Um, and it's it's really nice that way. Um, Sailor pens write really, really well, especially if you like uh, a finer line. Um, you're gonna be able to get a really crisp, fine line with a pen like this if you go with either like a fine or an extra fine. I don't like their extra fines, it's too fine for me, um, but I do like their fines and mediums. They write really smooth, um, they're decently wet. They're not like gushers by any means, but they are decently wet and they feel really great in my hand. Um, so I really, really, really recommend those. Um, again, like any video, um, check the, uh, I card. I'm gonna pin um, pretty much all of my actual reviews of these pens. So if you want to know like specific details, check that out. And then to round out the mix uh, is the Parker Duofold International size. Comes in at three hundred and eighty dollars US. This is the Centennial size, so it's a little bit bigger than um, the International size, but physically everything would look the same. 
This happens to be an older model. Um, there are many different colors now. Um, there's many different finishes. You can go skyrocket as far as what the material you can choose to get it made out of. Um, they have different like sections there. Um, but for the just, you know, run of the mill basic resin, um, you know, Parker International, um, then you'll be able to get it for about $380. Parker is a um, cartridge converter pen. Um, their nibs are pretty big. Like I said, the one that you'll get on the International is a little bit smaller, but functionally it's gonna write the same. It's a harder size, like a harder nib, so you won't get crazy amount of line variation or anything like that, but they write really reliably, um, fairly on the wet side. Um, so you don't really have to worry too much about anything going there. The detailing on the pens are really, really nice. Um, and what's cool about Parker is um, most of their pens, especially like their special editions or, or anything like this, are usually offered in a medium nib, but they do have a program where if you um, are willing to be without the pen for a little bit, um, you can send it away um, to have a free nib swap, essentially. So if you send it back to Parker, they will put any other pen size. So if you have a medium you want a fine, they'll put a fine. If you have a medium you want a double broad, they can put a double broad. Check out their website because for certain models, they can't necessarily do all of them, um, but they're pretty good about it and their customer service is really fantastic. Um, and it's pretty quick considering it goes from wherever you are. So for me, when I did it on a previous pen, not this one, um, I had it sent from, you know, Canada, Ontario, Canada, to France, and then back, and it was back to me within about three weeks. Um, so it was pretty darn quick, much, much quicker than I was expecting. Um, they're really on top of their game. They're great to, uh, to have a chat with, and they're really solid, reliable writers. Um, like I said, the, the international will be a little bit smaller, but the overall appearance and experience will be pretty much the same. Uh, just may not fit quite in your hand with the same size. Whew. So, <laughs> like every single one of uh, these top five videos, everyone's gonna have a different top five. These happen to be mine, um, but I wanna know what you guys would recommend because there are so many fountain pens in this price range. So many great fountain pens in this price range. So drop a comment in the comment section down below. Um, like I said, in the iCard, I'm gonna have all of the actual detailed um, reviews on them. Hit up my Instagram, I post pictures pretty often about what I'm doing, what I'm using, what I'm loving, what I'm not loving. Uh, it's just pens and tea is my Instagram channel. Hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more videos, hit that like button to tell me you actually liked this series. And guys, as always, I love ya and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey Parker, everybody's been asking for ya. Yeah, everybody's been asking for ya. You wanna take a take a second look and then be all famous? Oh yeah. See, so subscribe to my mama and follow her on Instagram.